13 years and 11 main entries means there's a whole lot of stabbing and sneaking to catch up on when it comes to the Assassin's Creed franchise. There's definitely not enough time left to play everything before Valhalla arrives, so here's the history of Assassin's Creed in 8 minutes. Unknown BCE. So it turns out there's a race of ancient aliens called the Isu. Throughout the series they're also called the Precursor Race or those who came before. They created humans on Earth and immediately enslaved them. 75,010 BCE. Because humans don't like being enslaved, Eve nicks what's known as the Apple of Eden, grabs Adam and escapes. Apples of Eden are going to come up a lot, they're a type of what's known as Pieces of Eden, ancient tech artifacts created by the Isu to control humanity and do generally powerful things. 75,000 BCE. A solar flare strikes Earth, wiping out the Isu and most of the humans, but some humans survive and manage to build a new world anyway. Go humans! 465 BCE. The first known use of the hidden blade is when the assassin Darius stabs King Xerxes of Persia. Xerxes was one of the proto-Templars, the Order of the Ancients, and Darius is the father-in-law of Cassandra, an ancestor of Origins Aya. Yet for all their power, they couldn't protect you. Not from me. 431 BCE. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Mystios Cassandra kicks a lot of Spartans across ancient Greece and stabs people with a piece of Isu tech called the Broken Spear of Leonidas. While sailing the Greek seas with those great biceps, she nabs Pythagoras' staff, which has an Isu called Alethia inside it. 49 BCE. A bit later on, Bayek and Aya murder their way through ancient Egypt as they take revenge for the murder of their son by a member of the Order of the Ancients. They form the Assassin's Brotherhood as they decide to take on the darkness in the world and even get a logo. 1176. Altair ibn La Ahad rediscovers the tenets of the Creed after a botched mission to steal an Apple of Eden, and makes his way through a to-do list of Templars that even includes his own traitorous master. He gets his own Apple of Eden and dedicates his life to finding out more about it. 1459 to 1524. This Ezio Auditore di Firenze chap rocks up, becomes an assassin to avenge the death of his family, befriends Leonardo da Vinci, beats up the Pope, finds out about an impending end of the world, kills Templars, and then heads to Constantinople to find the keys to Altair's library, where he speaks to Desmond in the future to tell him about the end of the world. 1715. A few hundred years later, pirate Edward Kenway pretends to be an assassin after he kills one, discovers a mysterious observatory powered by crystal skulls and vials of blood, and is opened by an Isu human descendant called the Sage. He saves the day, is pardoned for his piracy, and sails home to England. Oh, and yeah, he has a son called Haytham. More on him in a bit. 1756 to 1763. Not long after, an assassin called Shay Cormac becomes a Templar when he picks up an Isu artifact and accidentally sets off an earthquake that kills loads of people, so he blames the assassins. He kills Edward Kenway's fellow assassin Adewale and heads to Paris where he kills a French assassin called Charles Dorian. 1773. Edward's son Haytham turns out to be a Templar, travels to New York to gain access to an Isu temple, and while he can't get in, he ends up having a relationship and having a son. His son Raton Harkaton, or Connor Kenway, grows up hating his father and becomes an assassin to take revenge. Maybe you're sensing a theme? They don't kiss and make up, and Connor kills him. 1776 to 1794. That French assassin that Shay killed earlier, that's Arno Dorian's dad. Arno becomes an assassin to avenge his death and that of his adopted Templar dad. Don't, it's too complex. And teams up with other Templar Elise de la Serre to uncover corruption in Paris. Of course, he ends up having a showdown with a Templar Grand Master wielding what's known as the Sword of Eden. It explodes, Elise dies, and Arno is sad. 1868. Then, in Victorian London, Jacob and Evie Fry battle against Grandmaster Crawford Starrick by rescuing kids from workhouses and robbing trains. They get a rope launcher from Alexander Graham Bell, discover Edward Kenway had found a Shroud of Eden and not told anyone, and they end up fighting a Templar wearing it. Spoiler, they win. Dame Evie Fry. <laughs> Sir Jacob Fry. <laughs> Race you to the train. You're on. 2012. 
In an even worse year than 2020, in 2012 Desmond Miles is abducted and forced to relive the memories of his ancestor Altair. He gets rescued by the assassins, jumps back into the Animus to relive the memories of Ezio and, thanks to some aliens, discovers the world is going to end. Then he finds an apple of Eden, is forced to kill his friend Lucy because of Juno, breaks his brain and ends up stuck in the Animus, only to find out when he gets out that he has to go to New York and relive the memories of Connor to find out how to unlock a temple. This guy really can't catch a break because when he finally does, he decides to sacrifice himself so the world doesn't end and lets Juno the evil alien out onto the internet. Bye Desmond. 2013. An unnamed researcher pillages the memories of Edward Kenway from within Abstergo Entertainment, only to find the head of IT is a sage looking for a host body for Juno. He fails. 2015. Arno's and the memories of the Fry Twins come from a service called the Helix. The assassins recruit an initiate to relive the memories to discover the location of the Shroud of Eden before the Templars work it out. Unfortunately, the assassins are too late, a fight ensues and the Templars get away with the Shroud. Oh, and Danny Wallace's Sean Hastings stabs someone with a shock blade. 2017 to 2018. Things get easier when an Abstergo employee called Layla Hassan designs an animus that just needs DNA. She jumps through the memories of Bayek and Aya, ends up joining the assassins and then finding the Spear of Leonidas before experiencing the memories of Cassandra. Finally. Cassandra arrives, hands her the staff and tells her she's the heir of memories, whatever that means. Then Cassandra, well, dies. The staff then lets Layla experience simulations from the aforementioned Isu Alethia. Then Layla kills her friend Victoria with the staff, defeats Master Templar Otso Berg, and then asks the assassins to come get her. Time for Valhalla. Sit tight, Layla. We're coming for you, but it might take time. What are you gonna do? Until you get here, I'm going back into the Animus. There are a lot of people to say goodbye to.